Fear can sometimes be a great friend, but most of the time, it is the greatest enemy you have to defeat. Therefore, I'll be reading chapter 14 written by Mel Robbins in the book, The Five Second Rule. Here we go. Chapter 14, Beat Fear. Courage, Dear Heart by C.S. Lewis. Fear will make you do natty things. One of my greatest fears in life used to be dying in a fiery plane crash. When I used to get on a plane, I used to be a complete weirdo. I had all these superstitions about flying. First, I would scan the boarding area looking for women with small babies, men or women in uniform, priests, nuns, wheelchairs, off-duty pilots catching a ride home, or just generally kind-looking people. Then I would tell myself that God wouldn't let the plane go down with these nice folks on board. That would assuage me until I got on the plane. Then every bump or sound the plane made on the taxi out to the runway made my heart race and chest tightened. Takeoff was the worst. By the time the wheels left the tarmac, I was usually in a full state of panic. I closed my eyes and visualize an explosion, terrorists, my road getting stuck out of the plane, or the plane just dropping from the sky. I'll squeeze the armrest and could barely breathe. If the captain spoke to us over the loudspeaker, my fear index would cut in half. I didn't relax until the seatbelt lights turned off, which was my sign that the pilots believed it was safe to move about the cabin. In my mind, this meant that the immediate threat of death by plane crash was over. I cured myself of my fear of flying using the 5 second rule and a specific form of anxiety repraisal that I call anchor thoughts. And you can use the rule the exact way with any fear. Sahara did so with her fear of flying and it worked. Sahara can. P.S. I could so relate to your anxieties about flying that you shared at P-M-I-L-I-M in San Diego. Thought I was the only one who dreaded or not their seat being blown in an airplane accident. Stop watching air crash investigation and seconds before disaster for this reason. My friend's advice in 2011 and your 5 second rules helped. Rizwan Masani. Are you flying again? Zahara Ken already did. Tried 5 second rule this time and it worked. Here's how I did it. It's the same technique that I spoke about to Zahara. Create an anchor thought. First, before any trip, I come up with my anchor thought. This is the thought that is relevant to the trip that I'm taking and will anchor me if fear sets in. I start by thinking about the trip, where I'm flying to, and what I'm excited to do once I get there. If I'm learning to see friends in Drake's, Idaho, my anchor thought might be climbing tabletop mountain. If I'm traveling home to Michigan, I might think about the moment we pull into the driveway of my parents' house and my kids run out of the car to hack my folks or off taking a nice walk along Lake Michigan with my mom. If I'm heading to a meeting in Chicago, I'll think about getting a delicious dinner with a client. Was I have a specific image in mind, the rest is very easy. This use of the 5 second rule is a form of what researchers call if-then, planning. It's a way to keep yourself in control by creating a backup plan in advance. Plan is not to get nervous. But I do get on the plane and start to feel nervous. The I have my plan B, I'll use the 5 second rule and my anchor thought to beat my fear of flying. Studies show that this kind of if-then planning can boost your success rates by almost three times. On the plane, the moment I notice something that makes me nervous, whether that be an alarming song, turbulence, a climb that seems to be taking too long, whether that looks ominous or a bad vibe from a passenger next to me, my fears can be easily triggered because my pattern of thinking is so ingrained. When this happens, I thought to count 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 to flush the fear out of my head, activate my prefrontal cortex, 
and pull myself into the present moment. Then I force myself to anchor on the specific images of where I am flying to and I think to myself about how excited I am to walk on the beach with my mom, have dinner with a client in Chicago or climb Tabletop Mountain with my buddies. These anchoring images are powerful reminders of a simple truth. If I am sitting in a restaurant in Chicago, having dinner with my clients tonight, or walking the beach in Michigan tomorrow morning with my mom, or arriving home in time to make the girls lacrosse game, obviously, the plane didn't crash and I have nothing to worry about. Most important, I give my mind the contest it is looking for, so that it doesn't escalate the fear. As I think about the anchor thought, my body calms down. This is how a brain, the brain and the body thinks. Look at this picture. I am so excited to walk on the beach with mom. She's just excited to walk on the beach with her mom tomorrow all good. By using this technique over and over again, I cured my fear of flying. And by using, I mean using it over and over. It will get easier and easier until suddenly you won't be afraid anymore. You will have trained your mind to default to the positive excitement about what you are about to do instead of the fear. Dana was able to use this technique successfully and she's never been so calm when flying. Dana Samson Smith, I loved watching you at the Kearney Convention. I used your 54321 method on the plane yesterday and it worked. I don't think I've ever seen being so calm when flying. Thank you, your words are inspirational and uplifting. And friend put it to use on the flight home immediately after learning the technique at a conference in Dallas and it made a wall of difference. Friend. Hi, thank you. I do have a story. I've always hated flying and avoided. Nariam got real in Dallas. And since we live in MD, we had to fly. I was on the verge of a panic attack the entire flight. I was so upset that I got in other people's nerves. LOL. Fast forward to you speaking at Get Rio. Oh my god, it made a world of difference flying home. Every time I felt the panic, I used your 5 second rule and halfway through the flight, I was looking out the window and taking pictures. I can't believe how much I was missing by being afraid. That was proof enough for me and it's walked in other areas as well. I love what friend said at the end of her note. I can't believe how much I was missing by being afraid. She's right and it's heartbreaking. I realized the same thing. I was robbing myself of joy, opportunity and magic every single day because I was living with fear. It doesn't have to be that way. In five seconds flat, you can take control. You can beat fear. Today, I'm nervous or afraid when I board a plane. Occasionally, if we hit a rough turbulence, I will break out the rules so that I don't drive my fingernails into the arm of the person sitting next to me. However, I still use this technique when I face other fears before a negotiation or a difficult conversation. For example, I'll create an anchor thought of the conversation or the negotiation going really well. Specifically, I might picture someone hugging me or thanking me for having the conversation or toasting the deal with my business partner, partner at our favorite bar. That thought keeps me grounded, present and powerful. When you enter a conversation managing a fear, you can be your best because part of your mind is busy trying to manage that fear in real time. When you have an anchor thought, it allows you to disappear the fear the moment that you notice your mind drift to it. Remember, even though your fears and your habits can hijack you in 5 seconds, you can take back control just as quickly and continue to do so forever. Claudia Granados, thank you. You have helped so many of us face our fears. I've already used the 54321 method and will continue to do so. Forever grateful. Master your mind and anything is possible. That is all for chapter 14. Tomorrow I'll be reading 
Part 5, Courage Changes Everything and also Chapter 15. Therefore, please follow me, like and share and I will be always here explaining and reading the book so that you don't have to read in your own time. This is Danny the Reader. See you in the next one.